Now, how the, there's a there's always been this debate. It's been around for a long time. What's better for fat loss, low carb or low fat? Now, both same calories and all that stuff. Ultimately, up to the individual. My question is this: How do you determine, or how do you help the client determine if they're doing if they're going to do better with a lower calorie, low fat mm. diet versus a low low carb? Uh, low calorie diet. So there's a lot to be considered here. And I think this is where, in my opinion, the industry is still fucking up. But from a science perspective, right, peer reviewed research, it says assuming calories are controlled for properly and assuming proteins controlled for properly, the ratio of carbs to fat is indifferent when it comes to fat. Doesn't loss. matter. Like, like that's what science tells us. On now, a physiological level, doesn't matter. Correct. Now, that's assuming and, and I have to look at like what the control variables were and assume like there's no adaptations, there's no mm -hmm. histories, like I don't know what the training stressor or life stressor was, but um that to me is what's overlooked. Is like we're we're looking so myopically at the diet that we're now taking out all the other things that go into building a diet. What is life stress like? What is previous dietary attempts and stressors look like? What is your training stimulus? Um you know, we could look at just a, a, an everyday person um, and draw two extreme examples. We could have a stay at home house mom, very low stress, right? She doesn't even have kids, stay at home wife. And, and she's like, I just get to chill. I, I get to go run up my husband or my, my husband's credit card. Um, and, and life is fucking gold, right? Zero stress. Um, she would be just fine on a low carb diet, mm. right? There's, there's no need for that carbohydrate. There's no, uh, extreme sympathetic response. She's probably not doing super intense weight training. And, and even if she is that dose of intensity, that, that sympathetic response that you're going to get, it's really, uh, not that it's like negligible in the grand scheme of things. Now we look at that completely different and we say, okay, that same person is a fortune 500 CEO. And, and they go to work every day and, and they're in the fucking fire from six in the morning until 11 p.m. And they're putting out fires and they're responsible for all sorts of money. And uh, there's they're basically living in their sympathetic nervous system all day. Well, I would argue they should be a slightly higher carbohydrate mm -hmm. diet, right? Because what's going to happen? Like we know, and, and this goes back to when... Uh, I'm going to say the words carb backloading, but like when that whole thing was completely bastardized, right? And and the whole premise of it was, well, you wake up with elevated cortisol and elevated growth hormone. And so if you don't eat carbohydrates and you don't create an insulin spike, you're going to keep carbohydrates hot, or you're going to keep that cortisol hot, right? Mm -hmm. Cortisol is a catabolic hormone. It's non-selective. So it will break down some fat tissue mm -hmm. in conjunction with muscle tissue. Um, well, so if you eat your protein, it'll offset that, that muscle breakdown. And now all of a sudden you've got this environment for fat loss. Like that was the premise of it. But if we look at that and we apply it to this like super high, like sympathetic nervous system state and cortisol is already through the roof. And, and now you're not having any carbs to create that insulin spike to potentially shut off that cortisol in the morning. Then you walk in an environment, cortisol continues to shoot up all day. Then you go in a training environment, you train with an extreme amount of stress, right? And, and you go like balls to the wall, you fucking do CrossFit or some stupid shit, right? All of a sudden, now you're creating an environment where if you don't have carbohydrates, you are asking, even in an adequate caloric state, to start messing with the HPA axis. Because you don't have, because carbohydrates will raise insulin a little bit, yep. and that insulin is inversely related or with, with cortisol, yes. right? So insulin goes up, cortisol goes down. Yes. So if you're a high, so what you're saying is you have clients that want to burn body fat, the high stress ones typically do better with more carbs. The Correct. low stress ones typically do better uh, with low carb. I, yeah. I, I also think there's value too to um, assessing uh, stool, hair, hormones, sure. and then knowing what foods correlate with that the most. Yeah. Right? What, does that, what does that come back to though? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So like it's, the stress. Right, right. And, and, or, and or knowing that, okay, I know that this person, based off of these things that I'm getting from feedback from them, may be deficient and I know that this is a fat. I need to get more fat in their mm -hmm. diet. So that, that person, I would definitely not recommend a lower fat, higher carbohydrate diet because of those reasons. So I think that gets brought into account also, right? Yeah, yeah. And sometimes too, you know, I've noticed this and I've noticed this with clients. I've also noticed this with myself. When I am stressed, I do tend to crave more carbohydrates. Sure. Now the problem is when I eat them, I tend to want more of them. Um, and so then there's that factor too. Sure. Uh, what are your trigger foods? And yeah. uh, maybe low carb works better for you because carbohydrates make you want to eat. Way, uh, way no, more. I mean, maybe it's not, 
maybe it's not low call or maybe now you're messing with carb timing oh, okay right? and, Good and idea. so now yeah. maybe now maybe, maybe we're optimizing carb intake so if you're 200 grams you might have to have 50 grams pre-workout 50 intra 50 post and then 50 before bed so mm. you don't have right like you don't have the option that way you don't more. have you're not going to eat a bunch right? of you're not going to get up in the middle of the night yeah. and if you do like that's a whole another set of problems yeah, that we yeah. need to address yeah um so I, I do think there's ways to circumvent that but like when i start looking at the physiological adaptations because again I, I believe the physical follows mm. the physiological and so if i'm setting you up to physiologically fail then physically we're not going to be able to create what you right. want 